All right, I'm here at the nearby forest to look for pine. But uh, I think I'm gonna have to look for a little bit better candidate because the bark on this one is way too small for my project. So let's go and look for a better one. Okay, I think I found a pretty good candidate here for my pine bark lure. So let's see if I can try off some of these pieces. So that they won't break too much, of course. That looks like a pretty good piece over there. Oh yes, that's definitely usable. Not this one. Yes, that'll work too. And uh, let's see. So let's get started with the lure. Firstly I decided to cut the pine bark into smaller pieces so that it would be much more easier for me to start shaping the lure. It's been a really long time since I made anything from uh, pine bark, but uh, it's funny I didn't remember it being so easy to carve. The pine I was able to find from the forest is actually pretty close to the density of balsa wood. Also, it has similar floating properties as balsa wood, so it's a really nice material to use on a top or a bait, such as the one I'm making right now. Also, I'm pretty sure that a few of you guys are wondering what the hell is a nirha? Well, put it shortly, nirha is an old Finnish uh, top or a lure uh, from the early 1900s, which were originally used for trout and salmon, mainly on rivers. But of course other species will hit these things too. And I've used this for big perch and pike in particular with uh, pretty good success. Since the pine bark uh, that I was able to find was not very thick, I decided to make the lure from two different pieces and join them together later. Once the two pieces were sanded flat, I drew the profile to both of them. I used an old standard profile that I've used many times in the past for these type of topwater baits. After drawing the profile I then moved on to cutting out the profile. And I think I mentioned this in the uh, beginning that this sort of material is really nice to carve. Um, especially when you're used to carving harder woods like I am. Once the cutting was done, I pinched the two pieces between my fingers and sanded the two pieces identical that way. So naturally, once the two sides were sanded down, I started to bend the wireframe that I would then place inside the lure.
So, since I needed to make sort of a uh, slot to fit the wireframe inside, I needed to first glue it on to the other half so that it would not move while I used the wire to indent the two halves by pressing them together and creating an identical pattern to follow later on. I marked the identical indentions with a sharpie before starting to carve and just carved the indentions deep enough to accept the wire that I bent prior. I have to point out it's probably a good idea to leave a little space for the glue as well if you end up using this method. This sort of top part lure is meant to hang in the surface, a um, bit of an angle, with the tail pointing down, so I still needed to make a slot for the belly weight. Once the wire slot was done, it was time again to sniff some epoxy like a junkie and join the two halves together.
the glue had dried, I started to shape the lure and decided that since this was kind of a one-off, I did not feel like making a stencil for the upper profile, and I just eyeballed it, basically. After the knife work, I just sanded the surfaces and did the final adjustments to the profile. Usually when I do these top water baits, I try to make the cross section of the lure sort of like a V or a triangle. I find that it gives me better action and a more varied action as well. I also left the chin part of the lure uh, pretty flat for potentially better gliding action. Once the lure was shaped, I dipped it in a mixture of titanium oxide and lure varnish. I would then repeat this uh, five to six times to give me a nice and durable base. Instead of painting any scales, I opted to cover the lure with foil instead, that has been pressed with a metal mesh and a rolling pin. You want to make sure that uh, you have something like a shirt underneath and a completely flat surface, or else this won't work. So when I had my homemade scaled foil done, I used my other to outline and mark where I needed to cut. Oh, and by the way, the foil I used here is just normal cooking foil that you can buy from any supermarket. Thank you. 
Once the foil was cut to fit, I started to glue it on. Normally I would do this with wood glue, but um, I didn't have any handy at the moment, so I just used 5 minute epoxy. And uh, I hope you can see that I'm not forcing it onto the lure, but rather easing it on gently with my hand. This way you won't get nearly as many wrinkles as you would get if you would try to force it on. When I had the foil glued on, I dipped the bait a few times to clear varnish to hide the seams and make it ready to be painted. Since I was going for more traditional look, I decided to paint my topwater bait with um, natural colors and um, you can never go wrong with natural colors. Once everything was painted, all I needed to do was to slap some eyes on my bait and glue them on with some epoxy. So after adding few layers of epoxy to coat the lure, it's time again to take it out for a spin and see how it swims. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys later with a new project.